October 1972 will go down in the annals of sports history as the year when a modern-day miracle occurred. Twelve brand-new, fully manned, well-balanced Canadian and American hockey teams took to the ice and began thawing out the first ice age and opened up a closed shop that had become one of sports' most firmly locked-up monopolies. The impenetrable fortress that had withstood years of onslaught had finally met its match. It was the dawn of a new era brought about by a group of modern-day visionaries who saw a vital need and dedicated themselves to filling it. They did it with top-draw athletes, playing the kind of hockey that's exciting and vibrant. And in the years ahead, they will introduce hockey to hundreds of thousands of fans who otherwise would never have had the opportunity to see a live professional hockey game. The month of October was the culmination of months of bitter battles fought in strange arenas with even stranger weapons. And once again, the pen proved mightier than the sword. And the winners are the sports fans of today and the generations of future hockey fans no longer have to wait for something to happen to a present day hockey season ticket holder before they can put in a bid to see a game of professional shinny. It's a new meaningful chapter in the history of hockey and the sports world has become that much richer for it. This is only the beginning. It's a brand new ball game and this new breed of club owner is dedicated to giving the hockey fan the keenest competition, excitement and best entertainment in the world. Chicago, Cleveland, Houston, Los Angeles, this was a night that happened 12 times in the month of October. It started in Ottawa and Cleveland, then on to Houston and New York, Boston, Minnesota and Quebec, Los Angeles and Philadelphia, Winnipeg and Alberta. And this, the 12th night, had a special meaning. Left wing, number six, Fred Fleming. Left wing, number seven, Bob. It was taking place in Chicago where one of hockey superstars had reigned for 15 years and was still engaged in a battle that would not be won for still another week. Ladies and gentlemen, your Chicago Cougars. Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I only wish that I was in the blue and red standing over here to my left, but I'm sure it won't be long before it will happen. For 15 years, I played over on the other side of town, <laughs> and the only the only trophy that I received out in center ice was the uh, Art Ross scoring trophy that Clarence Campbell very awkwardly dropped for me. I don't know whether the dent's still in it or not, but I'm very, very delighted to receive this. This is World Hockey Association's brand of hockey. It's dynamic and explosive, 
wild and wide open. And from the WHA ice will grow the superstars of this, the world's most demanding sport. Gary Davidson, president of the WHA, was there from the beginning, and he tells how it started. The original idea to form the, the WHA, the World Hockey Association, came from Dennis Murphy, who had explained to me that there was only one major league in professional hockey, and that league was the National Hockey League. We brought in three cities in Canada, Edmonton, Winnipeg, and Calgary. Then we had a group in New York that came in. At the same time, a group in New England, led, led by Bob Schmertz and two young, aggressive businessmen, Howard Baldwin and John Coburn. The problem then arose of trying to balance out the geographical location of the franchises, and we ended up having Los Angeles and Houston, and San Francisco was moved to Quebec, so we had a, a balance more major league cities in the east it created some of a travel problem which we still have Eastern and Western Division, and we had uh, six teams in each division. That's kind of the alignment of the league. Now that we had cities, we had to have, have players, and so we decided to draft. We drafted in February of 1972 in Anaheim, California. We drafted every hockey player, amateur, semi-pro, pro, uh, collegiate, that was available. Each team then had a selected list that they could, from which they could work. We have now in the league, over 60 players with prior NHL experience. and we decided to go after players that had prior experience in the National Hockey League, and that concerned the reserve clause in the National Hockey League contract. The reserve clause provided that the player had to play for one club as long as that club wanted him, and that he'd have to sign the same contract year after year, uh, regardless of what his individual wishes were. Consequently, we felt that we could talk to any player who was playing under a one-year contract that expired October the 1st, 1972. Uh, Bobby Hall's contract with one was such, so was Gary Cheever's. Johnny McKenzie all had the same one-year contract. They have been very successful in helping us establish a credibility for the league in the first year. Uh, along that line, the contract that we have with Bobby Hall is the largest contract ever given to a team athlete in the history of sports. The bonus that we paid to Bobby to sign $1 million cash was the largest cash bonus ever given to a player. It all started in Canada in the late 19th century when they flattened out a ball and invented the puck, put skates on the players, and created the game of ice hockey. They really didn't create a game. They came up with a new form of mayhem because, short of armed conflict, ice hockey is the most grueling, warlike game ever conceived by the mind of man. The very name hockey is said to have been taken from the Mohawk Indian word hoji, which means literally to hurt. The good book states that the meek shall inherit the earth. 
but it never said a word about the ice. had any doubts about how rough and tough a hockey player's life can be, spend a little time watching the men who tend the nets. Some people say that they wear masks because the coaches and owners can't bear to see grown men cry. And Hull did come back to play on the other side of town in a jet uniform. And with him came the explosive, unpredictable hockey that the World Hockey Association has dedicated itself to. WHA is off to a great start. Personally, uh, I felt real good about uh, the World Hockey Association that, uh, that was formed because uh, it created more jobs. In my own particular case, uh, nobody had ever offered me a job in hockey other than uh, I had coached the Denver Spurs or the <clears throat> Western Hockey League, and uh, I wasn't completely out of hockey. I was coaching a junior team in Canada uh, when this opportunity arose for me to come in here uh, to our franchise and take over as coach.
I was sitting here reflecting on his last year's accomplishments by the WHA. Many critics felt that we would not make the full season with 12 strong franchises. Of course, we have, and now we're entering our second year, looking forward to even a better and bigger success in the first year. We had season attendance last year that exceeded our expectations by almost double. This is one of the rewarding things that we received as in the management position of the league, having the fans accept the WHA as Major League Hockey in its first season. They wondered what kind of players we could possibly come up with, and our all-star team showed them. We had such players as Jerry Cheevers, Ron Ward, Danny Lawson, Wayne Carlton, Tom Webster, Ted Green, Johnny McKenzie, and the Golden Jet, Bobby Hall. The Bobby Hull story has to be one of the most exciting stories in sports. Hull is probably the most idolized player the game has ever known. After 15 record-filled years with the Chicago Blackhawks, Bobby Hull joined the World Hockey Association by signing a multi-million dollar contract that made sports history. The WHA scored another first-year coup by signing network television contracts in both the United States and Canada something that no other major sports league had ever done before. But according to Gary Davidson, the high point of the season was the new league's acceptance by the fans. What the fans saw, they liked. They came in increasing numbers, pouring through turnstiles from Boston to Los Angeles, Alberta to Quebec. Over three million of them in all, more than twice what the critics agreed would be a good first year's attendance. Even more significant is that the attendance figures improved as the season progressed. And now, with more stars coming into the league, Gary Davidson looks for that trend to continue. I especially want to thank you great fans in Houston. And now, let's go back to Bill Deneen. Well, our strength, uh, I felt, was uh, down the middle. We did come up. Our first draft choice was Gordon Lavoisier. Uh, Hockey player that has had five years in the National Hockey League. He, he's had outstanding years wherever he's been. Lavoisier was Houston's leading scorer. He scored 36 goals and a total of 96 points. But he also distinguished himself as the center on the Arrow's highest scoring line, the action line. Lavoisier regards himself as a sort of quarterback directing traffic. He says it looks bad if a center scores more goals than assists. It means that a center is not properly setting up his wingers for shots. But Gordon's 60 assists, in addition to his 36 goals, serves as ample testimony to the outstanding job he did in controlling the puck and setting up his wingers. Lavoisier has been playing professional hockey for 16 years, just one year more than Eddie Hoekstra. Hoekstra specialized as a penalty killer for the Arrows, but he still managed to score 11 goals and assist on 28 others. He has missed the playoffs only twice in his 15-year career. The Arrows' defense was one of the more pleasant surprises for Coach Bill Deneen. He felt it improved with age, and the record shows that only five teams allowed fewer goals. The Arrows have one of the more aggressive defensemen in the league in John Shella. He broke in with the Houston Apollos six years ago. He then returned to Houston after two seasons with the Vancouver Canucks. But until he joined the Arrows, he had never made the playoffs. Shella's defensive partner is Paul Popeil. Paul was born and raised in Denmark and did not begin to play hockey until he was 13 years old, which by most standards is rather late in life. But today, Paul Popeil is recognized as one of the best defensemen in the league. Popeil and John Shella were paired together for most of the season, and they worked extremely well together. Shella is more of a defensive defenseman, while Popeil is more of an offensive defenseman. Popeil likes to make things happen, and often does. He was the team's fifth leading scorer with 64 points, and that included 16 goals.
The Arrows had an outstanding defensive defenseman in Larry Hale and a good two-way defenseman in Dunks McCallum. Dunks put in four years with the Pittsburgh Penguins. He has good size at 6'1 and 193 pounds and a good shot. He scored nine goals last year. Larry Hale likes to compare his job as a defenseman with that of a linebacker on a football team. The defenseman's job is to read the play as it develops and then react accordingly. Hale credits Bobby Orr with making it a more attractive job, noting that today's defensemen are playing a bigger offensive role by handling the puck more and bringing the puck up the ice. Hale only scored four goals last season, but he assisted on 26 and thus made a big contribution to the Houston offense. Another outstanding defenseman for Houston last season was Gordon Kanegeiser. He missed 33 games because of a recurring knee injury, but he still had an excellent season. In fact, Bill Deneen singled out Kanegeiser as the biggest surprise of the year. Deneen said he didn't have too much on Gordon's background when he signed him, but that he had received many good reports on him. Gordon was up briefly with the St. Louis Blues in 1968. Before joining the Arrows, he had been playing at places like Denver, Seattle, and Kansas City at the Central and Western League. Gordon came back to play in all nine of the Arrows playoff games and figures to help the Arrows even more in the years ahead. The Arrows have still another solid defenseman in Ray LaRose. LaRose typifies the experience the Arrows sought in building the team. He is an 11-year veteran, and he has given the Arrows valuable depth on defense, which is one reason the team has been so successful in that department. Houston also has experience up front with players like Murray Hall. Hall broke in with the Chicago Blackhawks 12 years ago. He also played with the Detroit Red Wings, the Minnesota North Stars, and the Vancouver Canucks. He is a good stick handler and was the Arrows' third leading scorer with 70 points. He scored 28 goals and assisted on 42 others. Murray Hall is also a very good defensive hockey player. Bill Deneen played him in key situations, like toward the end of the game with the Arrows trying to protect the one goal lead. In Deneen's words, Murray Hall had an outstanding season. Don Grierson played in all 78 of Houston's games, scoring 22 goals and 22 assists. Quite an accomplishment, considering it was his first season at the major league level. Grierson broke in with the Houston Apollos five years ago, and before joining the Arrows, he scored 45 goals for Port Huron of the International League. Grierson's aggressiveness makes him an exciting player to watch, and his scoring ability makes him a potential star. Hughes also came up with a big year in what was his major league debut. He's a strong skater and has an excellent shot. Hughes played only four years in the minor leagues before joining the World Hockey Association. He averaged 30 goals a season in three years at Phoenix. With the arrows, he scored 22 goals. The arrows had all kinds of experience and balance last season. Another veteran who enjoyed a 20-goal season was Brian McDonald. After a slow start, McDonald came on exceptionally strong in the second half of the season. He came through with numerous clutch goals down the stretch and was extremely instrumental in the Arrows' second place finish. 
McDonald got his first taste of Major League Hockey a little over four years ago when he played in six Stanley Cup games for the Chicago Blackhawks. Playing on the wing opposite McDonald was Jack Stanfield, whose older brother Fred plays for the Boston Bruins. Because Jack is such a good defensive player, Bill Deneen often employed him against the other team's better lines, usually against the other team's high-scoring right winger. But in addition to neutralizing the other team's scoring threat, Jack did some scoring of his own. He got eight goals during the season, another in the playoffs. Houston's highest scoring winger was Teddy Taylor. Taylor has been a pro 11 years. He joined the Arrows after two years with the Vancouver Canucks and last year had his best season, scoring 34 goals and 76 points. In addition to being the Arrows' second leading scorer, he was also the team's inspirational leader. As Bill Deneen put it, Teddy Taylor is a player with a lot of heart. Deneen says that Taylor does not have a lot of natural ability, but that when all is said and done, Taylor does an outstanding job. Taylor motivates people with his performance. He's a digger and a good forechecker. He plays the body well at both ends of the ice, and he always takes out his man. In short, Teddy Taylor is a good, all-around, hard-nosed hockey player. Another player with that brand of hustle is Kiki Mortson. Mortson turned pro 20 years ago, but at the age of 39, he still has the drive and desire of a rookie. What he lacks in size and finesse, he overcomes with determination. He's the kind of player who can fire up a team in the late stages of a game and maybe come up with a big goal. Uh, was totally responsible for our draft. Also, took upon myself and uh, also with the assistance of Jim Smith, our general manager and president, we went out and signed our hockey players. And on top of that, I had the opportunity of coaching the same, the same fellows. I would say that I was probably in a better position than most fellows that were putting the club together and that I did have familiarity with these players that a lot of other people didn't have. Uh, the fact that I had played up to a few years ago, knew a lot of these fellows personally, and. Uh, I've been friends with many of them. I, I think our signing job was probably a little bit easier than most. June 19, 1973. A banner day for Houston, the WHA, and especially Gordie Howe. Hockey's all-time leading goal scorer fulfilled one of his biggest dreams that day by signing on with the same team as his two sons, Mark and Marty. Arrow President Jim Smith signed Howe to a four-year contract estimated at $1 million. And so, after 25 years in a Detroit uniform, Gordie Howe will now be wearing the number nine of the Houston Arrows. Gordy said he couldn't be happier about coming to Houston. After talking to Smitty and some of the directors of the Houston Arrows, and treated like real, I don't know how to explain the kindness which they showed the entire Howe family when we got down, there's no doubt in my mind, that my ambitions were to play with the two boys, which would never have come about if it hadn't been for the Arrows. And I'm looking forward to it. And if the kindness which I've been shown in Houston by not only the hockey personnel, but the people outside of it and the news media, then uh, I'm going to have a lot of fun besides having the opportunity to play with a lot of hockey with the Houston Arrows. I believe Houston will do extremely well this year. Their first year in the league, they ran second to Winnipeg, and uh, then were eliminated by the Jets. But uh, hopefully with a Howe addition, plus some more exciting young hockey players, I think we, uh, I love that terminology, we can do extremely well. Uh, Marty and Mark are young players, sits out of the Junior A League. Mark is a, uh, I'd say he is just about tops in the way of puck handling and passing, so where he has to learn is just through experience, where some people play the body a little more than they do the puck. Uh, Marty is the kind that likes to play the body a lot more than the puck, and he, me, the old man, I just have to stand in there and try to use some of that finesse, which I've learned over 25 years of the hockey, because in my at my age bracket and the some of the punishment i have taken through the league i know i'm not as quick as i used to be and i'm not as strong as i used to be but hopefully the um, experience that i have will help somewhat 
in the way of the cause of Houston Arrows, so maybe get up and top. I don't know. I think when we go, he's just going to be one of the other rookies on the team. <laughs> and uh, oh, it should be a lot of fun. I played with him once before in the March time game, and uh, we had a good time. I had the flu, so I didn't play much, but we had a good time. I think the season should be. Uh, Is that why you couldn't stay with me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm really looking forward to playing with the old guy here. But, uh, <laughs> no, uh, he's the greatest player in the NHL, and uh, should help me out quite a bit if I play with him. So I will know. if you pass. There's uh, actually two types of hockey players. Uh, some show pain a little more than others, and uh, I think I call them thick-skinned or thin-skinned. And uh, I've seen this with players, and uh, I won't name names, but I've seen tough, tough individuals. Once they get cut, they seem to wilt into the background. For uh, for my boys, I know uh, young Mark, who is 18 now, he had a knee operation. They removed a cartilage, and six weeks later, he made the U.S. Olympic team, which, was, which headed over to Japan. Marty, on the other hand, uh, raising money for the uh, U.S. Olympic team had a displacement fracture of the cheekbone where it completely severed the bone, turned it around. They had to go in on top of the eye, bring down and turn that bone around and wire it. And he played with a face mask shortly after. So uh, that too, if you're part of the expression, that's guts. And that's what a hockey player is made of. So Larry Lund, for instance, is a good strong skater. He's a strong boy with a good shot. and. Uh, I know the arrows are looking forward to a good year from that young sir. Lund is a good playmaker. He assisted on 45 Houston goals last year and scored another 21, making him the Arrows' fourth leading scorer with 66 points. Quite a year, considering it was Lund's first season in the Major League. He has been playing pro hockey now for 12 years. Peel, who was with uh, with me or the Detroit Hockey Club for several years, showed tremendous potential, not only as a defenseman, but uh, he played up on the left wing. And as a matter of fact, I had a bad night with him once out the West Coast when he got two goals against me when I was supposed to be doing all the scoring. Then we have uh, the old Duke Harris. Duke, I know, when they have a team pitcher, I'm going to stand next to him because of this. But don't let that hairline fool you. He's got the heart of a young man. He has a good shot. And again, he has the ability to skate with the best of them. Duke displayed that ability last season, scoring a career high of 30 goals. He's an exciting player to watch. Like Bobby Hull, he likes to charge the length of the ice. He's also a good team player and helped pull the arrows together. The prerequisite for a winning hockey team is a good goaltender, and the arrows were fortunate to have two of them. Wayne Rutledge, a former Los Angeles king, emerged as one of the league's best. After a slow start and an injury, Rutledge adjusted his style slightly, and the results were instantaneous. His goals against average shrank to 2.96 by the end of the season. And then in the playoffs, he lowered it still further. He was in goal for all four of Houston's playoff victories. At 6'2 and 205 pounds, Rutledge is big for a goaltender, but because of his experience and quickness, he doesn't give the other team much of a net to shoot at. Rutledge played in about half of Houston's games last season. He shared the job with Don Smokey McLeod. If Smokey has one ingredient which a lot of the players could use to, uh, as goaltenders to save their sanity which is that he's completely relaxed at all times and maybe sometimes a little too much. But I think with his size, uh, 
All you have to do is keep him in the game and he'll keep the rest of you going because he's got the, that little common sense of humor that seems to make uh, such good balance for a hockey club. Brian Smith's another youngster, uh, not exactly a youngster, but I haven't seen him for a long time, but uh, it was kind of like a disappointment because when he was with Detroit, I was hoping to see more of him because I thought he had all-star potential all the way. Brian is the son of former NHL defenseman Des Smith and a brother of Vancouver Canuck goalie Gary Smith. He played two years in the NHL and then two and a half years in Switzerland before the Arrows finally won him over. And Brian is glad they did. I, th I think the surprising thing uh, about our inaugural year in the World Hockey Association is the uh, attendance around the league. I think it's better than most people anticipated. Uh, in our own particular case here in Houston, uh, we uh, are more than pleased with the reaction uh, of the Houston fan to the game of hockey.